This is your radio pastor, Concepcion Munguia, and this is Know the Truth of the Word broadcast, brought to you by New Covenant Through Christ Ministries, located 1957, Loganside Drive, right here in the mighty city of Los Angeles, California, 90047. Did you know that this is Pastor, or rather Clergy Appreciation Month? And certainly there are many times uh, that churches take out throughout the year maybe a time to remember the church anniversary but this is clergy appreciation month the entire month of October uh, has been recognized uh, as a month that the pastors and leaders of your local assembly should be honored in that they are committed to the preaching and teaching of God's Word uncompromisingly unadulterated in fact if you have a pastor that's teaching the Word of God I guarantee you my friend it's not always peaches and cream uh, sometimes it's very hard it's, it's hard being a leader in, in today's time because uh, again people do not value or respect uh, that leader maybe because he does not equate in their opinion to others who are successful in ministry listen to me please if your pastor is teaching you the Word of God that's something very rare that we find today most people are teaching the word of man and uh, people flock to such a teaching like that but if your pastor is truly teaching God's word you want to go and commend that pastor and drop him a letter or maybe give him a love offering to just encourage him to keep pressing in the faith because as a minister myself for some time now it is it's very difficult and it's 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 something that the pastor needs the grace of God every day to press through every Sunday and every Bible study of course in fact how do you know if you have a good pastor he's gonna get on your case in fact one sign that I can probably share with you you've wanted to leave the church at one time or the other because he made you so angry that he has confronted you with your sin in fact if you're going to a church where you're not being confronted with you I think that you're not in a church you're in some pep rally that of course appeals to the flesh and well it's very comfortable in that type of arena in fact uh, one another sign that you know you have a good pastor to some degree is you he's got some gray hairs some of them probably were put there uh, by you <laughs> him probably laboring or she probably laboring for you when you were in the world and backslidden and on your way to an eternal hell but they prayed you through and believed God when everybody else gave up on you the pastor remained faithful to give you and help you with money and even though you didn't pay your tithe even though you didn't give an offering he's the one who comes by to put a few dollars in your hand to get your kids some diapers and to maybe help you out with some food you need to go back and appreciate your pastor and I hope that <laughs> if there are some people listening that you haven't found some stupid reason to stop going to your church it's amazing you know we live in a time now that people are so easily offended the moment the pastor mentions something that they don't agree with oh let's leave the church oh well I don't like the way the choir sings oh well I don't like the way that the ushers or whatever the case and the list goes on and on and on and that just shows that you're not committed to Jesus because I guarantee you if you were in the time of Jesus and you heard Jesus preaching you would be offended at Jesus because he pulled no punches ladies and gentlemen he told people just like it was or didn't tell them at all he told them just like it was just like it is okay that's the kind of pastor those are the kind of leaders that we need telling people straight up like six o'clock straight up and down and of course when you look at the Gospels you find that Jesus is confrontational who called the scribes and Pharisees and the Sadducees and the and all of them lawyer he called them out told them they were snakes and vipers and liars and thieves and and he just went down the list that's the kind of pastor that we need one that will stand up and proclaim the Word of God irrespective of someone's feelings so if you're listening to me and your feelings have got hurt good they need to be hurt because as long as you stay in that realm you'll never walk in the spirit we are supposed to walk in the spirit it's beyond feeling for example the Bible tells us to love one another now is that a feeling or is it a commandment see I don't have to feel I love you I have to I'm commanded to love you in fact when you read in the great book of first Corinthians chapter 13 the entire well the majority of the chapter there of course is dealing with love charity I don't read feelings in that passage my friend and you can't even uh, agitate that passage to even 
uh, imply that it's about feelings. It's about facts. You understand? So a true pastor is not concerned with one's feelings because feelings change. Like when you feel like going to church, I guess, do you have to feel like you want to be saved? I mean, if it's about feelings, for some of you, you're so wishy-washy, I guess you're dealing with a schizophrenic spirit. Who are you today? One day you want to be saved, and one day you don't. One day you feel like you want, you feel like you're saved, and one day you feel like you're not. Wait a minute, something is wrong with that. It's not about feelings, ladies and gentlemen. It's about facts. Good grief, I didn't mean to go off into this, but I suppose someone out there is listening who needs to go back and apologize to their pastor and tell him that they are sorry sorry for the way they have conducted themselves and have ran him in the ground and have begun to the bring defamation of character to his integrity shame on you that have begun to try to to stop the man of god the woman of god from doing the work that god has called them because you don't agree well who are you as long as that bible teacher is preaching what the text says who are you to box with the man of God? Who are you to box with the woman of God? Listen to me, please. Be very, very careful on how you criticize those whom God has anointed. Anyhow, our topic today is dealing with grace, unmerited favor. You know, it's a term that we've heard many times over and over and over. And I just wanted to take a few moments to explain to those what actually grace is a little bit more clearly in fact I'll take it in another direction I'll take the extreme of grace and how that many people today are using grace as a means to live any old kind of way the term grace the word grace means unmerited favor that which we cannot accredit our to ourselves or work for it's not about winning <clears throat> or gaining brownie points with God he, of course, looked on our pitiful, fallen, backslidden, obscure, going astray state and said, I choose this person to be saved. I desire this person, therefore, I'm going to deliver them and save them and set them free from the bondage and the law of sin and death. So the word of God declares in Ephesians that for we are saved by grace through faith and that not of ourselves it is the gift of God so we see there the grace and the faith they're coupled they go hand in hand one needs of course the faith God gives them the faith to believe and to have that grace so praise God have you ever noticed that some people are quick to maybe defend sinners and defend wrongdoing and they're quick to say well we're under grace you know as though grace gives them some license to do whatever they want to do come to church when they want to come to church give when they want to give live right when they want to live right and they you know they're teeter-tottering in the faith you really can't tell if they're genuinely safe certainly you might see them reading the Bible and then a few moments later they may you know do something completely out of character uh, out of sync with the Holy Spirit and they're living some uh, antinomianist lifestyle and that word antinomianism it deals with uh, lawlessness pretty much they're not governed by the Word of God they say that we are free from the law and I can pretty much live like I want to live is that what Jesus died for my friends Did he die for you just to live any old kind of way or did he die that you might have the ability to live this life accordingly to God's Word he came to set the captives free free from sin but free to do what free to live for God without the bondage of sin uh, taking hold and ruling in one's life and so when I see Christians or I should say rather nominal Christians or pseudo Christians who claim that they are serving God and that they have the Holy Spirit indwelling inside of them and their lifestyle uh, reflects something different I think that they have a misunderstanding of grace my friend and that is they have now fashioned a God after their own liking you know in the book of Exodus chapter 20 it speaks about well God himself says thou shalt not have no other God before me and thou shalt not make any graven image now that word graven image is something because we automatically assume and it is true that they would fashion a God out of wood or out of stone or 
uh, they would make a god out of you know Mar whatever the case and you know it's amazing how uh, that that still takes place today they're known as idols but there is an idol that people have fashioned not tangibly seen but in their mind they have made an idol in their heart they have made a god in their mind that accepts any old kind of thing like homosexuality you see what they say well don't judge anybody because uh, God loves the, uh, uh, the, the sinner but, but hates the sin and so we don't judge anybody and, and see the God that I serve see he, he, it's okay for me to do this and to get high and to maybe smoke a little dope and maybe have a little bit of sex and I'm still saved now you know what they have done is what Exodus chapter 20 and what God says they have made for themselves a graven image they have made a God that fits their lifestyle that is comfortable and looks the other way when they're doing wrong but he's still gonna save them still throw out that life raft hey wait a minute my friend you don't wanna play with God's grace you don't wanna play with him he is no plaything. he's not some homeboy he's a judge my dear friend and that doesn't take away the fact that God is a God of love but we must also remember that he's a God of judgment he's not only someone that is going to love you yes but he's also going to judge your sins my dear friend he's gonna judge your your works now if you don't understand these things you have no fear of God then you will use grace as a means to say that you can do anything you want and that's not Bible church this is why we have so many scriptures in the New Testament namely if we use Galatians chapter 5 and Paul lists all the works of the flesh from adultery to fornication to uncleanness and lasciviousness and the list goes on and on and on and on all of these works that are that are detestable to God they are horrific and he says in the latter part there that they that do these things shall not inherit the kingdom of God so why are Christians or so-called Christians still in this particular state well maybe they're not saved ladies and gentlemen and that doesn't mean that Christians don't struggle yes but no true Christian wants to live a life of sin and they have the ability to go to sleep at night and sleep soundly and not be afraid of meeting God you know there are many people today that have played around with God and they thought that they were saved and they thought because somebody shook their hand and pat them on the back and they went down uh, a dry devil came up a wet one and and they have now uh, uh, been through all the new members classes and they've been through all the ceremonies and they think that they're saved and they live a life that is contrary to God's word and they laid their head down and they woke up in hell and they're thinking to themselves Lord Lord did we not prophesy cast out devils and do all these wondrous works and Jesus says I never knew you didn't mean that I knew you for a few weeks and then when you backslid I didn't I stopped knowing you it no he says I never knew you you never were saved good God Almighty I just want to challenge you that are listening here to study grace to see its liberty and see also its restrictions you see where the Spirit of the Lord is the Bible says there is liberty but is that liberty to do everything and anything we want do we sacrifice duty for the sake of liberty no you have a duty to be a servant unto God as Paul once well written well said in the book of Romans I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that ye present your bodies what a living sacrifice and well people are sacrificing all right but not for God they're not they're, they're sacrificing for themselves they'll sacrifice church to go watch the Lakers game they'll sacrifice giving tithe uh, they won't give tithe they, they, they'd, they'd rather go spend uh, the, on the latest sale or whatever the case it ought not to be that you would claim to be saved and not understand your duties under grace by which the Bible says to whom much is given much is required this is a radio pastor Concepcion Munguia if you have some questions concerning the things I've just said that probably have made you upset the number of course I hope you got a pen and paper 323 three eight one six four four nine once again three two three three eight one six four four nine and god bless you and until next week